Welcome to Time Bolt Office Hours on November 2nd, 2023. You are live with Doug and Quinston. We are here to answer your questions, check your workflows, and generally just make sure that you get the most out of Time Bolt. Can you give us a little bit of background about uh, the type of content you make and, and why you're here? I'm a safety manager for a AC distribution company, and we have branches throughout the U.S. A lot of what I'm doing is developing training videos uh, covering accidents. Okay, okay. And Rob, have we spoken before? Not uh, by email several times. I'm a little confused on the way to apply getting rid of of dead spots and videos and removing ums and uhs. And over the last couple of years, I've spent hours doing that. And this seems like a very easy solution. I'll be training my team after I understand the process. We'd like to just go ahead and give you a personal one-on-one -on -one training. We'll get you entirely up to speed running on Timebolt. This will be recorded. And that way you'll have this information for future team meetings, if that works for you. If, if, if we could, we'd be asking you to share your screens. Is that a possibility? Where I have loaded this is on my Mac. The office doesn't use Mac computers. I do a lot of graphic design using Premiere Pro, uh, things like that. I have that on the Mac separately. I actually have your program loaded on the Mac side. Our, our license keys work on up to two concurrent logins at a time. It doesn't matter if it's Mac or PC or two PCs oh, okay. or two Macs. Basically, just if you have if you have a master video file, you can just exchange JSON files between the two to cut lists. Uh, that might that might also work for you. I I think where my confusion is that I can go through and I run I create the 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 JSON portion for that file. But then I try to export it out for a premiere. And when I load it in, it hasn't removed the dead space and it hasn't removed the ums and the ahs. And I think that's because I don't understand the process for applying the JSON file before the export. Since he's since he's working in Premiere, if you want to just show him just one file, what the export process sure. is, and then I can back into that. After you show him how the, how to export, I can back into how to use Timebolt uh, to edit with. And what he's going to show you is how to take a video, you're going to export it into Premiere. So there's there's likely a step that you're missing or some confusion. Once that's done, I'll then back into this is how you use UmCheck and how to use Timebolt more effectively. Most effective. To give you an example of the most recent one that I'm doing is we have an order fulfillment device and our parent company does a lot of development on that for doing uh, receiving of product, inventory control, that kind of thing. And the young gentleman that is doing the demos, uh, every fifth or sixth word is an um. <laughs> so... I, I'm using that to trim that out. I'll just go over the export process from Premiere Pro, from Timebolt to Premiere Pro. Okay. The ums and the editing, I think Doug will be a better, will explain that better. So I'll just show you the process of how you get the file, the cuts from Timebolt into Premiere Pro. Now I have Timebolt open over here. I'm just going to go like, like you normally select a file, select right. one. I'm going to select a uh, strongman, this one file, .mp4. And as you can see, Timebolt has like done its thing. For uncheck, you'll have to do this. But for now, let's just yep. keep it over here. These cuts mm -hmm. are, they look nice. So I'm just going to yep. like keep them as they are. Note at the bottom, there are two things that you need to roughly understand about Timebolt. When you uh, want to get cuts into Premiere Pro, there are uh, two different ways. One is by using the extension, which you install on Premiere Pro. And the other way is by using something called XML. Right. XML is basically a translation language, which uh, allows you to send information from Timebolt into Prem Premiere Pro, right? And and I, I have exported using XML. And right. I can get that into Premiere Pro, but I think the problem is understanding why the cuts are not coming through. We'll take, I, I will need to look at why it's not working on yours, but for now, the process is pretty like straightforward. You just click on this button, it mm -hmm. exports it. Uh, you click on that, it will open up where the where the thing is and you just right. take it, you drag the file into your uh, media pool in Premiere Pro, right. drop it in. Usually it looks like this. Uh, what you need to do is you need Go to on. convert it into a list view. So once you make it a list I saw view- saw the video on that. Once you make it a list view, which one is what? This is the timeline the sequence okay. and uh -huh. this is the video file you don't want to load in the video file because if you do this it's going to just show you the video file so what you want to do is you want to double click on this part over here okay also you don't drag and drag this in if you drag this in it's uh -huh. going to take the entire sequence you don't want to do and, that and that's where i'm going wrong but you don't want to do that so what you do is you essentially double click on this icon you see this icon the the, yep. the beanstalk with the horizontal Correct. things double click on that and that's how you get the cuts. if that's... you do this if you do this for example if you drag and drop it in yep. you'll see a green item now if you double click on the green it will go in but you don't want to go through that because eating from the, the right yeah. <laughs> no, that 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 makes it very simple, and that's yeah. exactly where I'm going wrong. I think what you were doing was you were just dragging this in like this. Yes. So if you double click on, uh, for example, if you double click on the, it will it, it it would open up. But if you do it again, it's gonna change, change the, name. the name. So you got to be very careful with what you double click on. Right. And the second so, way of doing this is there's one more way of uh, using a uh, time bolt with uh -huh. uh, Premiere Pro, and that is by using the extension. The the main uh, reason why you would want to use the extension is if you have like multiple files. If you have like let's say you have one camera file, you have yes. a second camera file, and you have a separate audio device, right? You have three different files, for example. If you have all these files, XML wouldn't work because XML is only 
lim limited to one file at a time. You will use something called an extension. What we have yeah. to install the extension, you go into this part over here. There's a button at the top of Timebolt. It's called Multi File Utilities. And in that, yeah. there's a, the second option called Adobe Premiere Pro Extension. And you click on that, it'll open up a, and then you can just where to download it and how to install it. That's that, that stuff's there with the video and stuff. I'm not going to go through that okay. because that will take some time. So if I open another file in Timebolt, let's say, for example, I open the same file, cuts are the same. Instead of going to the bottom and choosing XML, I'm going to select JSON. JSON is essentially, again, a translation language, but it's different than XML. It's just something we use internally uh, to save uh, information and transfer that to different uh, extension. I'm going to click on this. It's going to give another file. Mm -hmm. This time it's it's named differently. It's a .json at the end. Now yes. this file is going to go into the extension. I come into Premiere Pro uh, and let's assume you've installed the extension for Premiere Pro from for Timebolt, which you find in this in that uh, right. multi-file yep. utilities, right? Yep. So let's say we've installed it. When I open the extension, it's going to live over here. Okay, I haven't installed this. I'm going to go Windows. I don't even have the ZXP, ZXP installer. There's a specific installer that we use. That is the AE script installer I come over here i download for windows and i open install the zxp installer you can set that to restart but i don't think i'll restart okay current user only now all i have to do is drag the downloaded thing i'm just going to drag what i downloaded from the timeable web website into this install okay it's installed i'm going to open premiere pro again i create a new project now create a new project now when i go over here i click on extensions and then the timeable extension is here it's in windows extension then you get timeable extension that's how you install it and now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take uh, the when we put the file in timeable timeable has generated the the cuts J yeah. What we need to do is we need to take that same file and import it into time into Pre Premiere Pro. I'm going to take that same file which I had and import it into Premiere Pro, and then I'm going to make a timeline. When you use the extension, you actually explicitly create a timeline by dragging the file. And the way the extension works is, let's say you have is is by just by clicking on it, you select the file, yeah, and then you say apply JSON file to it. Because essentially, you create the timeline, you set it up, and you say. Okay, now I want to apply that JSON file on this timeline. Okay. So click on it, apply JSON. It's going to open up a file where you have to select where that JSON file is. I generated the JSON file over here, .json, and that, that's it. And that's the cut. So and, let and me just walk through that again once so yep. that the whole process is like yep. in, in one snapshot. Cuts are generated. Let's assume these are perfect. I'm going to go to the bottom, export JSON. Right. JSON is ready. I go to Premiere Pro, get the same file that I put in Timebolt, drop it in here, make a timeline fr from it, open the extension. And now I select that clip and I say apply that JSON to it. Yeah. Right. What happens is sometimes you might have multiple files, right? So you have this file and then let's assume there is one more file, which is recorded at a different angle and maybe one more file that's recorded at a different angle. So let's say these are three different camera angles that are being recorded. And obviously they are not in sync because I just dragged the same file, but right. let's assume that's the case. What I do in this case is I, I sync them up. I can sync them with, with you no, know, by just like sliding them around right. or I can just right click and say, right. in this case, and, and select audio. It will basically take the audio channel and then try to synchronize the files based on the audio channels. So I click okay. on this, I click on okay. They're synchronized and I will basically drag them to start at T minus T is equal to zero. Let's assume that they're not in sync. For example, let's, let's assume this, this is the case. Now what happens is if I want to apply time, the JSON file on these clips, I have to select them all so before we just selected one of them, right? Now I'm going to select all of them and apply the JSON to all of them. It's basically cut them up and created like a multi level timeline, like a multi-file time timeline. So this is best when you have like more than one file, even if you have just one camera and maybe a separate microphone file, an MP3 or, or dot wave. And I, I do that all the time with, with uh, Zoom when I'm recording Zoom messages and people that are speaking and things like that. I, I, I understand that. And and I have right now, I have several JSON for one file that I, I've run through the ums and ahs. So all I have to do is go back and apply it to that file within uh, Premiere Pro. Yeah, so it, it's just well, like select the file I, I and apply it. Well, I, this is the thing. He's not needing a he doesn't need to apply a JSON because he's not doing multi-camera work as a multi-camera work as I understand. He's doing oh, yeah. you don't need so to work. right now, if I bring that file back into Timebolt and I already have run it through, rather than paying again to to get rid of the ums and ahs, how do I apply the yeah, let me JSON show you that. that I have to that file. Okay, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you that. And and I also have a question about the um, you know, the um filters too, because it's I've tried and Doug, I've tried your help too. Like you had sent me probably one of my posts with some some different words to try, and I've tried everything under the sun, and I'm still probably spending it. And tell me if this is normal, right? I'm probably spending 20, 30 minutes still going through and cutting out ums ahs. Are, are you able to share your screen and your what time how time bold is reacting with your um check by chance? Unfortunately, no. I'm in the car. Um, okay. So this this trip ad change that is the one that's the one that's a raw file right there and, and then the, the has JSON is, it has commentary in it okay. there, there's just somebody speaking and demonstrating a, an order fulfillment device and it has and, and it has ums and ahs in it so let's just take the process here drop the file in the time bolt see what it says this is a three minutes long perfect you basically run your automations first right so we've got our sound yeah. detection settings done properly and next thing how you long is it will it take too, too long to run no five minutes four minutes five minutes cool. start audio transcription and i've done this on this file four times over not knowing what <laughs> i was doing <laughs> once once this pops up and you pay I think your yeah. first three are free. You did this four times? Yeah. Yes. Can, can yeah. you check your email if you got that email? 
I'm sure. Yeah, I did. I did. Okay. I just and I, I think... didn't understand the process of getting it into to Premiere. Once you click this and you run Umcheck, why would you run it multiple times? That's what I'm trying to. So well, I don't I, I, because I don't. when I got when I got it into Premiere, I didn't I couldn't see that it actually applied it. I thought maybe I screwed up somehow, and I went back and tried three or four times, figuring I'd done something wrong. Oh, it, but but in in Timebolt, what you're about to see, it showed that there's ums and it's cutting them out of yes. it in time. Yes. So the only problem yes. was the only problem with with yours, Rob, is the XML. You didn't know to hit, double click hit, yeah on that click a file in Premiere. Yeah. Okay, well then that that sh that process should work very clear for you, quick for you. This doesn't take this doesn't take long <laughs> for about a five minute file. You're talking about a minute minutes worth of time. Yeah, I don't think it took that long already. And, and when it dumps out the FX or FC XML, and I go to import XML, I always get an error, always, and I have to select. It comes up okay. and I have, to, I, have, I have to pick up, I, I can't import XML normally. Essentially what I've got to do is take the XML, drag it onto the timeline, and then I have to select something else before it'll ever work. And I'll get you guys screenshots, all this stuff. I apologize, I was drive, driving to my shop. On the um checker though, the like I said, Doug, you had you had sent me some ideas to, to replace the ums and the um checker with the list you had. I've done that, but I still get, there's the silence detection, I'll still get big breaks in silence when I'm doing my reviews of, because I own a gun shop, reviews of guns and stuff. But when I'm doing reviews of guns, there'll be silences in my speech that it won't cut out. I love guns. So, thank you. Well, I sell guns, so we're good. <laughs> this is my new AR. Oh my, I, dude, I couldn't believe how fast, oh my God, it, how accurate those things are. They're amazing. With um check, like, like I said, I'll run it, I'll pay my 60 cents, it'll find... I would say probably 40% of the ums and, you know, other words in there. But like I said, I'll, I'll still have to end up editing probably 20, 30 minutes to cut the rest of it out, cut the silences out. When I run my files through umcheck and zoom files and other files, like it's catching the, the ways that I say, um, um, and, and so those types, there's yeah. one file that we have from one customer, the transcription itself. We are only as accurate as the transcriptions and Quinston would be able to explain a little more. There are some files where somebody says, um, and the way the transcription reads it, whether it's us or any other transcription based editor there it, it misses it doesn't miss it it'll identify it right here but then when you look at the time codes it'll be like one three hundred three hundred milliseconds it like cuts the uh mm, right in the middle of the um you end up with a uh, um you right like yeah. It, yeah. And, and so we had we have to make a call where if, if it's anything less than 100 milliseconds or something i, I don't know what what the what the rule don't is cut it. don't yeah. cut it because otherwise you'll be cutting in the middle of an um that is based on the accuracy of the transcription based on the file that was given to us let's let's take a look at this one for example this one he straight up says this one says um without any additional here let me let me do flip timeline okay just to see i did flip timeline to show exactly what we're what i did was i did flip timeline selection so we could see what we're cutting let's see let's see what these words are all right all right. So there's one word in there that he used that All right. is and swipe up, right. and it cuts swipe uh, as a so. If I click on that, I can remove that one, correct? Yes. Oh, yes. You press Alt and you'll be able to when you do reverse timeline, you kind of check like if if you wanted to keep this word. Um. Uh, well, there's an um, but there was the swipe back here. Yeah, it was like typically 98% of the time, that is not a real word. That's like a cough or a mic strike when you pause for four seconds, then say a word and then pause for another four seconds, right? Like right. all you would have to do is basically you could allow it like this if you wanted to. Oh, okay. 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 I could hit His S, remember B, S, O, B. You can allow it like this when I hit flip timeline again. It's allowed. Right. But there's, I think this is an example. This one seems to be catching, catching the ums. You're going to yeah. get some of them. And, and his favorite words are so and right. And I was glad to see that it got rid of those. What would even make that even more accurate is if his face, does he ever combine so and right? Like, so are, I was looking to see if he had any unique word choice to combinations and I'm not, I'm not seeing them. They, 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 they he pretty much sticks to a single, a yeah. single filler word versus yeah. four there, sentence continuation yeah. filler words like ando. There's a so um right, uh, you just passed it that was there. What's it at? Oh yeah, so, so um. What's it at? But, and it's caught and it has a, for some reason it does like a little um, punctuation. Punctuation, yeah. that kind of screws us up, right? But I wonder, would, it, would that would that combine it if, if I did so uh still? Or is oh, it, it is combined. I know, it but doesn't, I think... the punctuation doesn't matter. It, it, it oh, does it? it out. No, it doesn't matter. So, is all, I think so is already there. You see in the middle. See right here. So yeah. is already there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it is already there? Yeah, yeah. it's already there in the middle of nice. the... That's because the I'm, I'm the king of the filler words. But <laughs> but but Dean, that's the, the, the as you were saying, after this is done, what I do with each one of my projects, Rob, is like I download the JSON file right here, throw it in the folder that's the same folder yeah. as the as the 
that way, if I have to come back and revisit, I've got my JSON, I've got my XML, I've got my raw video and any um check stuff all within that same folder. That's how I was able to send that to you because I've been saving the files there. As, as, as uh, Quincy was saying, there, our um check starts with um check JSON. So you know it's not your right. regular JSON file, right? You could save a JSON file here. And then more often what, what ends up happening is if you turn off the selected words, now that the words are turned off, you don't really even need to go back and visit Umcheck anymore. You could save your your project right here, and it'll just basically save your JSON, your Umcheck with the cuts baked in. You just won't be able to go back and alter it. Right? When you say save the project here, what, what, oh right, okay, that's what I do. Whether you save it right here or hit save to JSON, that is like that's what Same saves thing. the cut list for Time Bolt. So, can you uh, show uh, how like exporting this file into Final Cut and how that shows up so that Dean can have a? <laughs> I just got to my desk, so I'm trying to get set up where I can join and I can just show you guys. What yeah, let's. I, I'm looking forward to seeing his file and. and and we'll with me. Uh, Dean, while you're doing that, just break in. Uh, let me know when you're ready to raise your hand or, or whatnot. I'll just okay. give you real, give Rob a real quick uh, run through. Just remember, Rob, there's three keys. Okay, when you when you throw your file in the time bolt, you want the first thing you want to do is put this playback rate at 1.5x. So when you're training your guys, there's no reason to be previewing at anything less than 1.5x. So then that way, when you put your when you put your cursor right here, go ahead and click into this and hit straight bar. You're gonna pre. You're gonna start previewing at 1.5x speed. Now, there's three keys that you have to remember. Okay, S O B. I'm not calling you that. I'm just saying that's exactly <laughs> what the words are. It's how to remember it, right? S O B. What S O B is? S splits the timeline. Okay, watch it, it right where my cursor is. S splits the uh -huh. timeline. O turns the existing scene off. When I click O, okay. Right now, the timeline, the playhead's going to be on here. I'm going to click O and it's going to shut this off. See how it just shut that off and skip to the next and go, shut yeah. that off. And that you can do it as you're previewing. Okay, it's nice enough because my voice isn't on this one. As you're previewing, you can just hit O, watch. It says on stage. That means we can go ahead and we can go ahead once it's full. It picks and we're... Yeah. See how fast you can turn those off? Okay, that turns yeah. the existing scene off. Let me, let me undo. I hit Command Z. Run, run through that one more time for me, Doug. You hit, I get the S and I know how to cut, like I know how to mark the cuts and, and blank them out. What's the O do again? O turns the existing scene off. So let's say, let's say I'm running through this you'll notice that it says on stage that and i didn't want this whole back part here right okay i hit s yep. that creates a split and now i hit oh yep. that turns that scene off let's say i'm running through oh okay it turns off between the markers yeah go ahead and go in it and we can go ahead and hit once off. it's fully it off. The right it just skips yep. to the next scene that's the fastest way on planet earth to turn a scene on or off inside of a uh, now the last key is b okay it's just as important as o because it allows you to do the exact thing and but the opposite it's that you when you hear something that you don't like you can hit b without stopping the playhead so imagine here, let me just go to imagine I'm, I'm listening to this and then i realize this is a repeat okay because you know, i'm repeating myself because, to say it better and i don't realize it until i get over here so i'm like start picking that order for that trip all right once it's fully ready that was a repeat i hit i can i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna hit b once it's full. it back cuts okay it back cuts your existing cut so you never have to stop the playhead S SOB, you never have to stop the playhead. Fully ready. I can, I can hit L and increase the speed of the playhead. If I don't like something, O turns that off. Go ahead and select. Let's say I didn't like what I heard. B Driver, turns that previous session. one off right there, right? SOB. Now, that's the keys that you slice up like against your knife or your, your timeline. Remember, you've got punch values as you're going through. We call it enhance what you, you basically run your automations, enhance what you have, and then export. That's how, that's, yeah. that's, that's how. So part of enhancing what you have is like you can use punch. You can add chapter markers for YouTube. Uh, it's it's not just about cutting your files down, but being able to categorize it properly, right? But with the letter P, see how I'm punching in right here? I can accentuate what's on a screen. I use alt or option and the, and the arrow keys uh, based on if you're using Windows or Mac and I can move around the screens. If you want to accentuate something, it's really fast. You just kind of run through. Created there, right underneath that trip, all right? I don't need to learn you know, frames. Minimize the I can move it around. That's the P. Now, the last thing is, the last thing I'll show you is for longer form content and you want to chapter this for, for YouTube, the yeah. only time you really hit the, hit the uh, right. trackpad is when you type in chapter markers. This is chapter one, mark cut, okay? Then you how, do you get, how do you get that menu up? How do you get that menu up again? Right click. right click, right click. Okay. This is the only time I'm going to say to right click because we already learned SOB, the punch values. You don't need, you can punch in here, right? You can go right and then go like, <clears throat> but why when you can, and then the only thing that you really do manually say, this is chapter two, make it as long as you want. Okay. Hit M. Oh, we'll do one more. This is chapter three. I mean, can't spell worth this shit. So now what I'm going to do is this can be as long as you want. I always use turbo mode because I render inside time bolt. You can do this either which way where these three dot icons, I go to download markers text file, open this up. And what you have 
have right here, the significance of this is now you've got a copy paste. Now you've got copy paste chapter markers that are already formatted to drop directly into the description in YouTube and cut exactly where you're it's minute three and a half. Isn't the same as going to be the same minute three and a half in your cut video. It's probably like two minutes and something. All that math is done for you. So you just copy and paste it. You never have to watch your footage again. I'm assuming those chapter markers. When you say come, Premiere Pro, yeah, they do. When you say come across to Premiere, what do you mean by that? Um, I would be able to find them in Premiere Pro as markers. That, that yeah. Well, th but there's little... there won't be text attached to it, but there'll be like a yellow line. Yeah, yeah. DaVinci Resolve also and has a little yellow carrot that uh, distinguishes the chapter markers as well. The other thing, Doug, on the top right hand side, second icon, that is all of the shortcuts that are inside time. Yeah, I'm just I was just giving you like the, the top line. If you're going to train people and get them using like just get them into this thing quick, SOB yep. and then the punch keys. I swear that's like from I don't even use my mouse while I'm I just use the keyboard. So the arrow keys also up and down arrow keys can move to, to the next clip, shift up and down, move to the next green clip you don't even need to use your mouse while editing you just use your keyboard except for markers except for typing in except for markers yeah. typing is there is there a cheat sheet of those key codes anywhere that's a over there. right here oh okay cool oh duh got it okay cool yeah never yeah. looked on that side yeah Okay. Well, I'm excited because I, I think now I understand. Awesome. I have three people that are going to be here. before you before you jump off before you jump off. I would like to know how did you get to how did you get to know about Time Bolt? Over the years, I've been doing a lot of podcasts for the company, and they came to me a couple of weeks ago and they said, "What we want to do is start making some 30 to 50 minute podcasts." And I said, "You realize that that's going to take three And the IT manager sent me a link and he said, "Haven't you seen this package before?" So it came, it came from him. Nice, excellent, excellent. I, do you have any additional questions? No. Well, that's it for me. I, I really appreciate your time on this. Okay. Well, feel, feel free to uh, uh, stick around and join us. Thank you so much for thanks so much for choosing Timebolt, uh, joining us, Dean. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I can share. Yeah, I can share. All right, you should see Final Cut Pro. Uh, hold on, Divinci's causing me to. All right, so I have some JSON files I can send you. I can do any anything you guys need. Right? If you, if I let me get out of here. Why is it stuck here? We'll start in time. I, I think the ideal way to do this is to start in Timebolt. Run your deck. Okay. Uh, let's let's first look at what's happening inside Timebolt. Do you want to, okay. Do you want to see one of the JSONs or no? It's, I'll, I'll let Quinson answer that, but for right now. Let's just start with Timebolt and open yeah. the JSON with the raw okay. file. Yeah, you throw your raw file in Timebolt. I don't know why this window is not letting me I get out I think you need to like just shut off. So. I'll just do this. Once you're in these NLEs, you can never get out. Yeah, I know, right? All right, bear with me. Let me try to get, let me share. I'm just going to share my whole screen. Is that way you guys, I'm not trying to go world hunger with windows here. Uh, just make sure you click that share sound button. Yes, share sound button. Oh, share sound button. Okay. When you share in Zoom, there's a small checkbox at the bottom that says share sound. Oh, I see that. Yeah, cool. I never knew that. Uh, before that, uh, do you have the um check file or you got to download it from the email? I have, I, I don't mind paying the 60 cents for the, I don't, I don't mind. No, I'm just saying um, in the interest of time, if your file is too long, it's it, not. it just makes sense. Okay, fine. Yeah, it only takes like 60 seconds. I love you because of uh, what content you make. And I know, Quinston here is like salivating over the bike. He's, he's like, that's oh, one of my, we like want to be your best my, friend. That's one of my three babies. I'm also well, you have a two way advocate. You have a rocket? Yeah, I have a, that. This rocket is what's called the triple black. They only made a thousand of them. I have that one. I have this bike. Um, I have a Tiger 1200 Explorer GT. And then I have a Ural sidecar motorcycle. I have a, I just started with super bikes. I have a Z900 at the moment. Nice. And like I said, I know. Well, while you're downloading, just let me talk about guns, okay? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. I'll send you, I'll send you all my info, by the way. Yeah, please, please. There's I'll just, just go to pricing and get for free. <laughs> Dean, Dean, where are you based out of? South Carolina. Well, it's a little bit better being a two-way advocate there than in the great state of Connecticut where I am. Yeah, you live in a communist state, man. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> where you have to die. You're required to <laughs> what's funny is is we well, I'm seeing he's the M1 or the M Intel version on this one here. Yeah. We're seeing probably ten to fifteen people a month come into the shop that are moving from California, Massachusetts. New York. It's pretty, pretty wild. It, it's, it's, it, it's crazy. Like I take my girls bowling and I think I'm like the only dude that bowls packing. Right. Because I've got the <laughs> alien, I've got the alien. Like this is the best. This right here is the best like holster. Alien. It's a, it's a yeah. belly band holster by alien gear. And yeah, no, I can run at full speed. I got a dog I run with and like, you can do everything with this on and it provides great concealment and when you don't have like a when, when you're not wearing like long sleeve winterized clothes it also depends wear. on what you like to carry like i alternate between a hellcat and a uh, 43x i carry i carry a nighthawk i'm a 1911 guy i've had been uh, since i'm able to carry carry a uh, nighthawk um, uh, commander size like a full w size no 4.2 instead of a 5 5.0 I've, I've got to get a tack light and a mounting handle for my for my ar yeah and I, yeah that's easy, that's handle. easy so. I, I, that's something really kind of inconspicuous i don't think i need a whole like handle yeah, i got some cool stuff we carry bnt and bnt makes a really cool small grip that's a 1911 pick round and by the way this tool has helped me a lot man i used to spend hours cutting this stuff out man but i did you one feature you said is there's a setting where i don't have to delete the cuts because what happens when it gets into final cut pro it's a bunch of times like 
voices in the audio. It's kind of goofy. I'll show it to you when we when we uh, import it in. What would be cool is, have you ever thought about offering, like, say, you know, it's let's like you, you buy 20 bucks worth of it and that way you don't have to go to, through this every time it just checks to yeah. see if you have that would be kind yeah, of cool. i've been planning that that would be good just like do an cool. average and like do an oh, average it, it probably just shows up in time but you don't have to click that yeah essentially just something that allows me to say okay i'm, I'm going to put 10 bucks or 20 bucks yeah in my pot of money and then you guys just draw from that 100 percent. so what do you want what do you want to see here before we get into it might as well just turn off right <laughs> yes i can that's fine I just want to get a context for. Can can you play it? Like flip flip timeline and play it. There's a button that. called flip timeline below. So clear markers to the right. Uh, sorry, left. And then okay. just click on any green part and just start playing. After you put it on 1.5x. Can you do one more thing? Can you pause it? Uh, flip yeah. timeline again. Yep. Uh, go to umcheck or uh, that button yep. over there, and then click on merge detections in transcription. Okay, now flip timeline and play again. Let's see if there's any. Uh, that's good, right, Doug? I don't know. Uh, so, uh, and you. There was a couple examples. I'm going to slow it down just so I can hear it again. Yeah. So bear with me. Uh, and you just right. I guess the only way we're going to be able to tell is if you un put, undo the flip timeline and just yeah. play it because there might be. Yeah, just go ahead and play. Like put on one point five. Capture pin goes in. Your spring goes in. Your buffer system goes back on. Uh, your cage goes back on. Um, your lower goes back on. And that's it, guys. That's a gun. Again, I'll give you a shot of the front here. Let me get that pin in. Typically, you put that screw in the top of the shroud first. Let me go. Sorry, I had to wrestle with that a little bit, guys. Apologies for that. So you can see here, uh, the suppressor itself is. So there's your suppressor. It's flush with the end of the handguard. So it's very awesome. Where else are you going to get an internally suppressed gun that's 15 inches long? Uh, made of this quality, right? So BNT, as you guys know, uh, they're made in Switzerland. The APC 9K, the non integrally suppressed version of this, was just adopted by the US Army for its sub new submachine gun. Uh, all the mags from BNT are, are interchangeable with every other gun, um, with the exception of. So you so kind of see, right? Like, yeah, like right. here's a great example. Like, hit, that's the, that's a numb. Just in this, if you were doing this and, and you were watching this, okay, you'd hit S, hit S, hit S, and hit B, okay, because it's going to back cut that. Yep. Now, okay, hit, cool. let's, okay. let's, let's listen to some more. Hit uh, with hit the exception button. of I, I think the SPC. Button. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I missed that. Go ahead. No, just hit the, hit hit. Sp just get in the habit of hitting space bar versus the play because I'm okay. Okay. I could be wrong there. Uh, Got it. Uh, most every gun they make. There was another one. They make, it uses the same magazine, which is amazing. It does come with flip ups, as you can see here. It does come with a sling for a single attachment right here that you can actually it hangs actually really well when you have that. It does have a QD points on each side of here. It does come with pick rail here and here. Uh, you do have some other slots if you wanted to mount some more pick rail. You can move this pick rail around if you wanted to. Uh, a lot of guys are putting lights on one side, uh, lasers on another, and that's about it, guys. That's the gun. Uh, it does offer the second suppressor stage. It is a, it is the rest of the suppressor. If you wanted this thing to be completely silent, you can put this on and it will look just like an MP5. So guys, I have these in limited quantities. Don't wait. These will not last long. We got them in yesterday. I haven't posted them yet on the website. As soon as they go up on the website, they're going to be gone. Like, if, again, take hey, if you on, subscribe to the channel. Bar? Now, as you're going through, you just you just kind of heard like don't don't touch it. But you know the part that we just played. It was just kind of like so uh, so uh or not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was you could probably do without those words. Hit the B key like as you're uh, once you hit spacebar, hit B very quick, and you'll see that part go away. Again, take make if you subscribe to the again take make if you subscribe to the channel, you see this video. Hit us up uh, right away. So that's the gun, guys. Uh, I'll get into the couple stars of the show. I figured what better uh, accessory for your new uh, army approved submachine gun than bringing in some some marine equipment. <laughs> so this is from Medford. Uh, it's his UMC USMC fighter. This one's made out of uh, S35. IV. This is layer G10. Uh, it is a solid tang throughout the knife. Uh, just an amazing life. It comes with a gorgeous so, leather sheath. Yeah, uh, now, yeah, so that was a big so one. You're seeing, yeah, you're seeing kind of what I'm seeing, right? Because that's what yeah. I do. Like half, half of it was cut out. The rest wasn't. Yeah. You see how that so, just I mean, kind of cut it out yeah, right through the half. What you guys are seeing, right, is I'll it, it does this, and then I'll go through and spend another 15, 20 minutes listening to it at normal speed and cutting out ums, uhs. Uh, when I, I have a bad habit of going like in the middle of a conversation, I cut those out, but I know it's not going to find those. But you can see like... It, I spend a good amount of time still cutting ums and uhs and all that good stuff out even after I do this. If you were to pull up the transcription and look at the transcription file and we were to look exactly where, if you were to look at the transcription, you would see that it, says, that it shows an um and, you know, and that it has a timeline. But in the transcription file, these are the most expensive that you can buy. There's no like setting to make them better or anything like that. They, they're what's available that does the word tokens. You would see that it's probably like 200 milliseconds and that it's such a small sliver. It was just combined with, uh, the the dead air to the left. When you look at when you look at Time Bolt, you can combine keyword choices. When you look at our competitors, they're basically just the ums. The, you're going to have the exact. They use the exact same type of token based transcriptions. They're going to have the same issues. It's just you're not going to get all the variability that you can add um and and so all the different word choice combinations like you can with Time Bolt. When you're going through, never preview it at regular speed. Never hit the play button. You are once you learn these keys, you'll be able to edit faster in Time Bolt than 
you could possibly do inside Final Cut. So your goal is, is that when you when you export this timeline into Final Cut, everything is entirely cut out. You're not adding time inside time, inside Final Cut unless you're adding like a bumper or something like that, right? Okay. Because I, I even think you would be you want to be able to chapter this content too, don't you? I do, and I didn't know how to do that until you just showed us. So now that I know that exists, yes. I'll uh, I'll be using that. Are these settings because I, I think I have these right based on the other YouTube videos? That... No, so, those, well, there's these... one thing I do want to get to. I I asked you to click one more button, which is merge detections. Uh, can you open Amchak again? So the reason I told you is because of this button right at the bottom. So what it does is it takes the transcription information and then merges that with the existing base cut that Timebot has already oh, given you. Cool. The reason okay. I told you that is because uh, because you're playing with guns, right? And the yeah. guns have a sound. Timebolt detects that sound as like a side because Timebolt does sound detection as a base cut. It's going to take that sound and treat it like a, an actual voice, which you don't want, right? So because you have the transcription information, now you actually know where the voice is and where it's just a gun, you know, banging against, you know, clicking. Right, when you right. click that button, it takes that information from the transcription and basically treats the gun as a silence. When you hit merge detections in the timeline, does it also remove the ums and ahs or do you have to remove no, the no, ums and ahs it's, first? It's just silences, just gun sound and silence. Do so you have to turn off the selected word choices, then open up um check again and then turn that off? So you so first you... click the first button and then you click the second button. So it's basically like three layers, right? The first layer is silence, the second layer is um check, and the third layer is this. Is the, it's a combination of the two to catch. Because what, what you'll find in competitors is like, imagine you're you're going through this and you're showing a demonstration and you're going through, the guns are a perfect example. This is it's such a perfect example. You're moving through and you're taking them apart, right? You may be showing them how to do it and the process matters as opposed to when you stop talking, that time just doesn't disappear, right? In right. time bolt, it stays. So because it doesn't just disappear, you can do things like fast forward silence as well. If you're doing stuff with, with weapons and you stop talking, have you ever tried fast forward silence? Uh-uh. -uh. Is there a part in this video where you're like, okay, what's happening in in this silence? Like, see, yeah, like, what's what's there? What's going on in there? I'm trying to remember. I think the SBC might be right there. See what's in this. Perfect. Typically, you put that. So you can play as own. Yeah. Okay. So that screw in to pop the shroud first. Let me go. Sorry. Hold on one second. Let's say that on both sides of those, that that was important information, right? What I want you to do is is go down, go down on, on time bolt, scroll down. There you go. Keep going, and then hit uh, fast forward silences. And there's ways to automate it and stuff like that, but we don't need a way to automate it. Maybe you just want to speed it up by like three x. You can see see the speed rate right there. That's a drop yeah. down. You can do three x, two x. Hell, you can. This this is the only time you can actually add time by slowing it down. That's when it still okay. kind of freaks me out. You can actually. That's the only way to add. <laughs> time in time bolt is by <laughs> slowing it down it's kind of kind of interesting but as you now as you go up because you hit fast forward silence is the only other besides typing in chapter markers now is the only other time that you also use the keypad so you're going to go to those red parts uh above the bar like and i click it and see how it turned orange now do turn the other one orange but now this is what i would recommend this is this is what uh you can do let's just say you wanted to render you were going to render this this actually exports xml into final cut pro fast forward work that you do will export and the clips are actually sped up do you want to just show that quinston yeah, right now that's Let's, let's just get into Premiere or Final Cut Pro and then click on that thing over there. Yeah. And we'll open the folder right there and then double click on that file. It does the same thing, but it's just faster. Okay. Now you can open, double click on that. No errors. What I was doing, let me show you what I was doing. Let me delete this. I was doing file import XML, right? Then I'll go to the desktop and I'll import this. That should work too. And and this that's is what okay. happens. Interesting. That's okay. That's not a, no, no, a but no, file no, breaking. Like, it doesn't break anything. But my question would be is, how is there... One way it doesn't happen. One way it doesn't create an error. And the other, way, uh, just uh, just press OK. It doesn't affect your file at all. Yeah, it doesn't. I just didn't because I kept I kept getting that error. I didn't know what was missing or anything like that. Right. It, it makes sense. Like you're thinking about the errors when it actually has nothing to do with anything. If there's something wrong. Right. If you okay. play it, it should play just fine. Uh, overall length on the barrel is three inches. If you go oh, to go go to that one spot where we fast forwarded, just so you can see how see how that works. God, where do I? How do I know where that spot is? It's at six. It's probably at like four four minutes. So it says six years. It's four in the video. You think about, about four because the red parts are gone, right? Just, yeah, it's, it's gonna compress. And zoom in. Uh, how do it I is, do that again? Just so, uh, like with your finger, like trackpad. No, it's not letting me do that. Because yeah, like the, that. Mute, the mute, mute. Oh, he had mute on. Typically. Yeah, yeah, the, the mute okay. option was on. In this instance, I would not use mute. It 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 uh it'll have a continuation of the sound that won't sound uh, jarring or kind of out of place. It got it. It just speeds up. It doesn't increase the pitch. It just speeds it up. Um, now you said in, in you were talking to that guy, the last guy that was on. Is there? You said in here, there's a way <laughs> that it won't show all the cuts, or it'll it'll look like one regular audio yeah, so file. Yeah, so that's in. Uh, this is. It's not going to happen in Final Cut. It's going to happen in Timebolt. If you open okay. Timebolt and you go into settings, so in the top uh, left corner, there's a settings yeah. option. 
And then if you scroll down, uh, there is an option for file, uh, FCP XML export, and you can check this part. It says create okay, splits, but don't delete the detected silence. If you okay. click on yep. done, and yep. you have to export the FCP XML again, and then this file will now contain All... the cuts as well as the silence. I, I don't, I've never, ever, ever used that. Do you guys want a snapshot of this or? No, no we it, already okay. know this happens. It, it's, okay. it's not a, it's, it's not, it's not a consequence. But now right. what you're going to do is just take a lot more time to go through and remove cuts and your chapter markers will no longer work. No, they won't. No, well, but they I won't work. work. They, they won't work. Yeah. I wasn't trying, I wasn't right, trying so, to be snide. Up the... All right. Well, then I don't want to do that. <laughs> exactly. You want to do all of your cut work inside Time Bolt. There's no reason. That's that's what I was showing you. Like, as, you, as you're going through, you should not have to edit for time once you once you go into Final Cut Pro. Like, your every word should be precise. Your cuts are all precise. You just use the SOB keys yep. to capture maybe the 30% of the ums and ahs and so's that it didn't capture. You're probably, right. it looks like with this particular file, you know, you're getting around... 70 to 75 percent of the yeah. of the filler uh but yeah. with as you saw most a lot of your filler words are happening at the beginning into sentences too so that's really easy yep. you just hit the s button at the s and based if it's forward or back you're hitting o or b got it okay now do i ever use any well so here's no there's no yeah. no okay. don't, now, don't touch those except for save okay now I and mean, those are basically if you have to manipulate in some way which is like you have three different files and you want to sync them up somehow that that's the reason why those tools are there. I, I don't think you'd you, you'd ever need to use them. There's also a, a FCP XML multicam. If you scroll yeah, down, I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you about that because sometimes I do record my face on one camera while I'm introducing the video, and then I switch down to the table cam. So multicam essentially means that you can add two or three, how many ever files essentially, audio or video to a single um, XML file essentially. So yeah. We have a video for that. But if you go into a uh, tool, uh, multi-file utilities, at, at the top of the, in the menu bar, there's the option called multi-file utilities in that there is the, the bottom option. There's a, if you click on it, there's a video which you can watch, which is a tutorial of essentially how that works. Okay, cool. Can, can, is it possible, Quinston, I, I can't recall, is it possible to, is it possible when I hit record in Timebolt to switch my camera source while I'm recording with Timebolt? I'm sure. I should think, work yeah, let, if let me, it doesn't work then that that's a bug then i i, I gotta fix it. well because if, if it, it should it work. does work if it does here let me let me share my screen all right I'll stop. if it doesn't work then that's a bug. here let me share my screen this might this might also be of great help to you I mean, this this right here you go to capture hit screen yeah. recorder hit start recording so now like uh, this is just another camera source i could be talking to my camera then start talking again you would see me going from this right. to this and, and it cuts out all the space in between which also means that that's the same camera i use by the way you got the you got the full-on camera you can be talking about your pistol right and just like some other camera source right now you can go and whether that's oh, yeah. increase that to full screen or, or not you can you can then this could be of your like your uh, your high definition camera of your of your uh, pistol or whatever that you're that you're yeah. working on yeah. okay. if, if you can't combine them if you can't combine them so then you hit stop recording and you can save this as a standard quick uh, you got to do this before but standard quick and small or it saves an hd right and as we've gotten better okay. with our audio quiz and our audio is just really it's the rendering is really fantastic okay I, I th nice. it's, it's entirely changed our, our zoom recordings and all that stuff you can you can actually record it and then once you hit uh save because yeah, really what i do right is i have two sony cameras right and what i end up doing is i end up pulling the memory cards out of those you know, pulling the audio pulling pulling the video off of both and then do the multi-cam in final cut pro and then just kill the video of the of the second camera and just use it you audio. should really look into getting a capture card a capture card for that and basically connecting everything to your pc or mac and then getting those as video sources and then recording them directly on your pc on on the computer when you say capture card what what do you mean by that? Well, capture card essentially what it does is it takes your uh, camera input and essentially creates a stream that you can then uh, route it back to your computer. And then you can, in your computer, basically record it instead of recording it on the camera. I think we're, I think I, it, Dean's, uh, with his tutorials, I, like that is one case where, okay, I understand why you use your camera on that, right? Because it, you lose some fidelity coming through capture Correct. cards and like, like I lose a lot of fidelity. I'm shooting straight down. Like those videos yeah. you see, there's a camera, my camera's with a big arm shooting straight down. It, there really is a difference. Like I can tell it, like when I do brand videos and if I just made a YouTube channel and that's all I, oh, that's what I did, right? I, you make sure that the best quality possible. I would definitely right. be looking at uh, using FCP multicam. Okay. Which, because that is our best multicam editor. Like by far, uh, yeah. By, by far because of Final Cut Pro. But if you export FCP multicam, you're going to be able to drop that in do you know where to find that all of our tutorials and how to use these features and called a, our features page and right okay. here fcp multicam this is going to walk yeah. you step by step and just watch this video like the first part of it he's going to try and tell you how to use time bolt you don't need to worry about that just go to the export and how to what that process looks like inside okay. final cut because now you're able to in final cut you'll be able to switch between cameras you uh, select the video yeah. clip you then click on the down arrow over here and select sync selection to monitoring angle 
I'll do that for camera B as well. And then once that's done, I can go back to my main timeline. I'll select all of these clips and I'll head over to my audio properties in the inspector window and I'll turn the audio on for the audio angle. And I'll make sure my multicam viewer is open by using the shortcut command shift seven. If need be, I can hide the browser window using the shortcut control command one. And then I can simply hop through the timeline, changing the angles by clicking on each of the angles in the multicam yeah, viewer kind of what or I do. by using the number. This is gonna, this will save you a boatload of time. It'll maintain the integrity of your file. It'll get you into Final Cut as fast as possible. Just again, all of your cut work done inside Timebolt. Make your markers inside Timebolt with, for your chapter markers. And if you end up adding time, a bumper up, up, up at the beginning, right? Just add five seconds to all your marker timelines right it'll it just saves so much time okay cool now i was gonna say so i'm i'm looking at I, i've been using davinci a little bit just to try to get into that a little more i would assume it's, it's simply it's, it kind of works the same way in davinci just export regular xml same same kind of way xml is perfect for single file uh pretty much across the board just use xml right. and all the punch all the punch values speed up values all that stuff also export into the xml okay. and, and then you want to use the extensions in our special when you have multi-cam projects yeah you, you want to use the extension when you have multi-cam and xml when you don't the same uh, there, there is the multi-cam utilities button there it has three options premiere pro davinci resolve and final cut pro so if you if you want to like uh play around with multi-cam i appreciate it no that's good what's your what's your channel Helasis h-e-l-a-c-i-o-u-s uh, let me just drop it here in the chat that's the youtube channel and our website's same pretty much the same thing i'll take a look i'll, I'll, I'll take a look and uh, definitely sign up but i think dean that that should set you up pretty pretty good you, you should be good to go um, with your cool. with your workflow and appreciate you jumping on and, and joining us and taking the time and, and certainly for choosing time bolt do you have any additional questions we can help you with no i think this is good man it's, i've been using it now for probably i don't know three two three months now did the lifetime thing and how did i find you uh i know dylan bates nice. <laughs> oh. he pointed me i'm like i was telling him what i'm doing and he's like dude just go get time bolt <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. cool yeah all right that's, that's awesome. all i got though i appreciate it. but yeah what i'll do is i'll email you like a business card essentially and then let me know who you who is going to be ordering from me and then like i said I'll, I'll create you guys a special code to get you to get you hooked up fantastic i'll definitely take a look at your site and see what, see what you got what, see what you got to offer awesome. i appreciate it guys sure you bet and i'm gonna go ahead and close this down quinston if you would stay on dean it was very sure. nice very nice meeting yeah, you yeah you too nice you, dean that's yeah, it. For, appreciate it. That's it Take for Time Bolt Office Hours on November 2nd, 2023. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and of course the notification bell when we go live. And I'm out of time. Bye-bye. Hey, everyone.